Hi everyone, it's Bernard here. I hope you're all well and staying safe and safe and welcome to my film and TV channel. And today we're going to take a look at a brand new TV drama from ITV. So ITV have chipped in with one. We've got a three episode mini series entitled Des. Please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notification so these little reviews come out. I do movie reviews and information vlogs and also quizzes as well. So please check my playlists and uh, see what's out there. Quite interesting. These dramas are always always good fun because we get a lot of uh, different views on these dramas, especially the BBC ones, but uh, the ITV ones as well get a, get a bit of uh, interesting feedback. So let's kick off with this one called Des. It's the three-part ITV television drama miniseries premiere so just just finished finished last night as i'm recording this so it's brand new out there and out to buy yet so you check your it's on it the itv hub if you're outside of the uk please check your tele, your subscription channels wherever you can get good british drama and look out for this one if it interests you it's based on the 1983 arrest of scottish serial killer dennis nielsen after the discovery of human remains causing the blockage of a drain near his home. I think he actually reported the blockage as well. So there you go. I think he was setting himself up, wasn't he, for this? Uh, the script is based on the book Killing for Company uh, by Brian Masters, who actually interviewed Nielsen while he was in prison and kept on interviewing him uh, for many years, apparently. Uh, Nielsen himself was born in Fraserburgh, Aberdeenshire. I'm not quite sure if Mr Tennant's got the accent right on this one. We do get these sort of critiques on these TV dramas about accents and stuff like that. But uh, to my English ears anyway, I, I have actually heard the real Dennis Nielsen speaking and there's not, not much similarity apart from obviously a Scottish accent. So I'm not quite sure if he's got the Fraserburgh uh, lilt to the Scottish accent correct. I'm sure someone from Fraserburgh might, might tell me that. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, Nielsen himself was born in Fraserburgh in Aberdeenshire. Uh, ITV, they're, they're making a habit of this now. This is the 10th in a sequence of ITV miniseries featuring notorious British murder cases of the past two centuries. They've done such things from this is personal the hunt for the yorkshire ripper in 2000 shipman they did in 2002 a is for acid they did in 2000 for two the brides in the bath in 2003 see no evil the moors murders in 2006 appropriate adult in 2011 dark angel in 2016 in plain sight in 2016 and the pembrokeshire murders in 2020 i reviewed that a few months back some of those were better done than, than others, and uh, if you've not seen some of them, there's there's nine for you to go at, isn't it? All, always worth a catch up. Uh, please try and find some of those. Please uh, make a note because they're all worth a watch. Uh, the main characters and actors in this one: David Tennant plays Dennis Nielsen. Yep, similarities are there. Well, you've seen the, you've probably seen the images by now on screen. Uh, he's the actual serial killer. Daniel Mays plays Detective Chief, Chief Inspector Peter J. Jason Watkins plays the biographer Brian Masters and Rock Cook, Ron Cook as DSI Chambers. They're the main characters. There's not really anyone outside of that. They're all ma mainly bit part characters after that. Directed by Lewis Arnold. Now, he's the last couple of things he's done recently. He's done, done a, a series, a mini series called Dark Money and he's done a mini series called Cleaning Up. But I'll, I'll chat about that later in, in my little thoughts on this. A little bit of trivia, Dennis Nielsen was actually 37 years old at the time of where the events were depicted in 1983. David Tennant, David Tennant was at 48 at the time of filming, so he looks quite well done to uh, David Tennant. I'm, I did put him in his mid-40s to nearly 50 when I was looking at him, but uh, yeah, so is it 11 years his senior. Uh, is it any good? Well, internet movie, nothing on Rotten Tomatoes or critic sites as yet. So we've got the inter internet movie database and there's been 685 scores left, probably about 15 reviews or so. And it's actually averaging 8.3 out of 10 overall, so a very, very healthy score for this sort of mini-series. And the episodes themselves, episode 1 scored 8.6, and episode 2 and 3 both scored 8.5. I would have probably, yeah, I would have, I, did, I, I didn't mind episode 1, and the, the, again, the next two perhaps not as well. I'm not giving you my scores yet, I mean, that's later on, isn't it? Anyway, Internet Movie Database, the users, what did they think? Well, some of the comments, competent but familiar. 
David Tennant's performance is one to remember. Compelling. There's a BAFTA in this for Tennant. Well, we'll get back to that in my little views in a bit. Meh. <laughs> so, someone didn't, wasn't overly impressed. Some good acting performances, but lacks tension. Yeah, we'll come back to that in a bit as well, when my little thoughts. Not gripping. Rillington Place, it ain't. Well, Rillington Place was a cracking, a cracking series, wasn't it? If you've not, that wasn't listed there. It obviously, not in the last 10 years, but that's, that's worth a watch as well. Rillington Place, see well, that one out if you've never seen it. Fantastic performances, drive this true life story. Highly recommended. And then I've got, I've got to look into a little more detail on this one. Some good acting performances, but lacks tension. And they only gave it six out of ten. This is Professor Snuggle Pumpkin. So how, how much credence we can give to this? I do not know Professor Snuggle Pumpkin. I don't know if it's a man or a woman. Uh, but they wrote this on the 16th of September 2020. As I said, they give it six out of ten. Not in the class of other police procedurals, such as Spiral or Prime Suspect. The chosen approach of cataloguing the aftermath of Nielsen's crimes robs the drama of any tension whatsoever tenant seems to just play himself certainly no master class yeah a lot of people have been saying that as other well saying it is a master class rather than it's not a master class as others have said on here nothing remotely chilling about his portrayal of nielsen nothing seems to happen in episode two so there's a lot of, there is a loss of pace with episode three finally attempting to answer the question of why he did this crime a triumph over hype over a triumph of hype over substance disappointing so yeah i finished on that because i thought there's elements of that i'll touch upon in my little burners thoughts and ratings which i'll i'll go through now with you my mgm burners ratings um yeah i mean it is a high average score isn't it eight point eight point what is it eight point five 8.3 out of 10 or even though the episodes are scoring 8.5 and 8.6 so I have no idea how to get to 8.3 8.3 out of 10 for the actual whole thing because it never seems to work out but yeah it, there is a high score looking through some of the reviews there's a lots of 9s and 10 out of 10s which I'm always as you know I'm always dubious about that it might be someone connected with the program because I don't think uh, this really is, is in them higher echelons I'll sort of hint at that at the moment I don't think it is an 8, 9 or 10 to be honest be honest with you there's some criticism of it being a bit boring i can understand that because of the style of the film on to tenant yeah he did he did a good job he did a good job with the role but nothing spectacular i didn't i mean i've actually as i said i've seen very brief glimpses of the of the um of dennis nielsen himself in docu uh, sort of semi documentaries because i've tried not to watch too much on this i'll explain that in a moment but yeah he, he did look the part. He was superb. I say his accent wasn't to me as an English from an English point of view a uh, spot on to what Nielsen sounds like. But Nielsen, I mean, he must have been quite annoying and boring in my opinion. The longer you spent with him, obviously these poor people obviously didn't spend long with him, did they? So I mean, they, you know, they they probably uh, didn't suffer that. But tenants played in quite well on that basis. He was obviously after a while, I got a little bit bored with tenants' appearances, and it's mainly verbal. It's all verbal. There's no action as such, if you like. It's all verbal, either to the police or to his uh, autobiographer uh, Brian Masters. So the quirkiness, there's a little bit of quirkiness at first, you know, you sort of, not smile, but you sort of laugh at the the attitude, what this guy says, this, this serial kill, you know, it's a serious thing, but obviously what he says make, makes you sort of, you know, but it's quite it's humorous in a dark way unfortunately and yeah if tenants played him correctly he's a little bit monotonous after a while and by by the end of three episodes i'd even grown tired of uh of mr tenant's portrayal of it so it does wear a little bit thin which is unfortunate but he's only he's only playing the character so, so perhaps the character's a little bit thin as well so despite the plaudits for reviewers for tenant i think i think this is more watchable for the actor daniel mays who plays who plays the the copper who's obviously the determined copper who wants to sort out sort all this out and he's the sort of copper this is going back to 1983 don't forget he's the sort of copper that we'd like in our corner we'd like you know if anything bad happened to us we'd, he's the sort of copper we, we'd want looking into things for us as well so i think it's watchable not for tenant which because not many people are mentioning daniel mays i think daniel mays is, does a superb job and he, he sort of leads the whole series in my opinion and made it made it watchable in my eyes where it might have struggled a little bit i mean 
for those wanting to watch the series, I, I thought we'd get... Because obviously, like a lot of these series, the actual arrest is the start of the programme. So I thought we'd get, obviously, back in time. I thought we'd get time leaps back in time, but obviously we didn't. It basically, it's it follows the inv invest police investigation rather than actually concentrate on what Nielsen did at any one point in time. And obviously the book writers' interviews and the police interviews are the basis basis of the drama. So it will put people off. I mean, my my good lady like like she does she does like a good serial killer thriller, and it's not she thought it was okay, but it's not really her sort of thing. She likes a bit more meat on the meat on the bone. It's a horrible thing to say, but that that's what you know. So it will disappoint people. I can understand it, even though a lot of those reviews are very positive. I've not seen many bad reviews at the moment. So it would lose some appeal for certainly if you want a bit of gory action. Um, no, there's, there's none, none really in that. Some pencil drawings, etc. Some it's it's all left to the imagination. You have to be careful, of course, in this day and age, because obviously a lot of the it's 1983, but a lot of the families and friends of some of these victims, um, are the ones that they found. I won't say too much about what happened, but uh, obviously some of the families and friends of these victims are, are still here, and that has to be considered obviously when you do a drama like this. And in a way, the drama does a really good job because there's no glorification at all of uh, what Nielsen did, and uh, and certainly no glorification with on-screen violence. Uh, so. Yeah, it has done a good job in that way of actually protecting things, and I think I think uh, Brian Masters has. Uh, I've not read the book, but I believe he he did wanted the same in the book as well. He wanted to protect. He kept he kept the victims and you know an, anonymity, so because he didn't want to glorify it in any way. And I, I think the drama does that. So that's what it was. Obviously, it's based on Brian Masters' book. So. There you go. He's probably the. Uh, we'll get onto the director in a moment. The director's probably followed that path with with doing this, which is fair enough. There was some early indication that we might see a little bit of uh, Peter Jay's family life backstory, but there's none at all. There's nothing at all. He obviously, he's obviously estranged from his wife, and he very rarely gets to see his kids. But there's nothing, no no progression of that at all. There was a hint of that in the very first episode, but there's no real look at. Uh, and I would like to see more of that, but obviously we've only got a three three part mini series, so there's only so much you can put in it. Obviously about a guy who's killed numerous people, and obviously the biographer Masters again. There's a little bit of background to his life but again he's a guy that didn't really interest me that much as a as the way the actor played him anyway I mean whether he's better in real life I'm not sure but from a from an interesting point of view he didn't really affect me in any way I didn't really enjoy his, his time on screen he didn't really add anything for me unfortunately uh, Jay called uh, Detective Jay called Nielsen unremarkable, and I sort of agree with that assessment I mean, based, based on what this series anyway um, as for for the this mini series, yeah, I mean, it's a good watch. I mean, it's three it's three episodes, but we only really see glimpses of the full story, and it's a sort of series that could have easily been made into a a more longer episodic sort of thing, and uh, it does. It's what it's made me do. I deliberately, I deliberately didn't look at any documentaries. There's some documentaries knocking around as well at the same time to complement this this TV series. I deliberately didn't watch those. I didn't want to know too, too much about. It. I, I sort of knew bits and pieces, but obviously it's it's a long time ago now. And I, so I watched this, but obviously it's all it's done is made me want to go out and find out the real story because there's so much, you know, bio biographical about Nielsen himself that's not that wasn't covered in this. It's just it just touched upon. So I do I do have an urge to go if there's not going to be a 12 episode uh, season one two three four five and six i don't you know which is possible with this thing um yeah it does want me to go out and read a read a, a little bit about it more i mean just to go on to one of the critiques before some good acting performances but lack tension i mean there's a little bit of tension with the with the last episode with um the sort of obviously as you get to the courtroom bits if people like courtroom dramas there's a little bit of tension in that but i have to agree there was there wasn't that much tension throughout it and the fact the fact that it owned up from the start from the start i'm not ruining anything there from the start of the series i mean this is a true story you probably know it anyway but the fact that it owned up to these things i mean there's very very little little tension at all uh, so yeah i would have to agree with that point that was made before yeah getting back to the director lewis arnold he was he was obviously responsible for dark money and cleaning up and I, 
those two series for me were quite competent, but nothing special when I when I watched those series, which is the only last couple of years. And likewise, this is the same. And again, as I said, he's probably stuck quite closely to Brian Masters' book, which is what the series is based on. But again, I find it competent. I don't find it anything special. I think Tennant's okay. I don't find him anything special. As I said, it was just the actual uh, portrayal of uh, the Detective Grey by uh, Daniel Mays that sort of impress me more than anything else so yeah it's a competent thing it's, and i said this director lewis arnold he seems a competent director without being too showy and i think for this sort of thing we perhaps could have done with a little bit more grit in this because of the subject and it, it just didn't have that feel it was such it's such a graphic horrible subject it just deserved perhaps a little bit more darkness to it you know and in the storytelling so it it's not exactly a must watch this, I don't think. But I'm not I'm not gonna give it a low rating, but I certainly can't give it anything above eight. I mean, I just I just I just can't do it. And I do like a lot of I do like these series with a lot of verbal in. There's a lot of verbal in this, there's not much action, it's more interviews and you know, uh, investigation going on. I don't mind that at all. That's one of my favourite things. I don't always have to have plenty of action and gore. As you know, I'm not a big action fan anyway. And there is plenty of verbal in this, so it will put certain people off. But I do think this is a missed opportunity. I think it could have been done, even though it's based on the book, I think it could have been done a lot better than it has been. So I'm going to give it my MGN score, Bernard's MGN rated. I've been waffling on for far too long now, of 6.5 out of 10. So that's okay. I mean, it's above a watchable. But I'm not going to go mad and give it anything over 8 like some people have on Internet Movie Database. Anyway, if you watch this or you're going to watch it, let me know what you think. As I say, I wasn't uh, competent, I would call it. I'm going to say it's a competent series without being anything spectacular. And as I said, it, the good thing about it, it did, certainly didn't glorify what he did, uh, which is fair enough and out of respect to the families, which is, is great in that way. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please check my links on screen. If you can uh, friend or follow me on Facebook and Twitter, I check every couple of days, I friend and follow you back and I stick stuff on there. I don't necessarily stick on vlogs as always. I try and put something on there that's quite interesting. And if you're into football, please uh, check out my playlist for Manchester City, my football team. I do vlogs on Citizen, my Citizen channel, which covers City past and City present. So if you're into that or know anyone, please point them in my direction. And of course, if you can visit my little website, moviegamenostalgia.com, for old rare DVDs, movie posters from the 1990s and 2000s. There's some in the background there, if you fancied any of them, and board games, that would be absolutely fantastic. Much appreciated. And if you want to have a look round, just follow the link to it helps my Google Analytics, etc. Anyway, thanks for watching that. As I said, let me know in the comments what you think. Until we meet again, please look after yourself, look after your friends, look after your family, and let's all look after each other. And all I can ask for you is to stay safe, everyone, until we meet again. Bird is saying goodbye for now. Thanks for watching.